وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We're going to look at the state of the Salaf al-Salih how they used to be after the month of Ramadan once the month of Ramadan had finished what guidance can we take from those people who preceded us in good about how they would behave after the month of Ramadan finished it was said to Bishr ibn al-Harith rahimahullah ta'ala inna qawman yata'abbaduna wa yajtahiduna fi Ramadan faqat faqala bi'sa al-qawm la ya'rifuna Allah haqqan illa fi Ramadan inna al-salih alladhi yata'abbad wa yajtahid as-sanata kullaha it was said to him, there are a group of people, they worship Allah and they work hard in the month of Ramadan only. Just in the month of Ramadan. What we might call today the Ramadan Muslim, the person who when Ramadan comes, they really, you know, they, they dust themselves down and they, they, they do their worship, they fast, they pray. But after Ramadan, they don't worship Allah at all. He said, what a terrible people they are. What a terrible people they are. That they only truly know Allah in Ramadan. The righteous person is the one who worships and works hard the whole year round. So the Salaf al-Salih, rahimahumullah ta'ala, they didn't see that Ramadan was a time for worship and the rest of the year is a time for, for doing other things. Rather, they saw Ramadan as a training program to develop their ability to worship Allah in the rest of the year. And Abu Mansur al-Shirazi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in one of his gatherings, he said, Mal'eed, laysa al-eedu liman ghurifa lah, inna mal'eedu liman ghufira lah. He said, what is Eid? He said, Eid is not for the one who ghurifa lahu, quti'a lahu, and it's, uh, the clothing, new clothing is cut for them. New clothing is tailored for them. He said, Eid is not the one who new clothing is tailored for them, but Eid is for the one who is forgiven. SubhanAllah, they saw that Eid, yeah, celebration, what's deserving of celebration is being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And SubhanAllah, just the person getting new clothes on Eid, and just the person having lots of food on Eid, that in itself, that's not that's not what Eid is about. Eid is about what you did in the month of Ramadan and celebrating a huge act of worship that you were able to complete by the grace of Allah. It's not about having new clothes. And subhanAllah, we see so sad the situation that many, many people, they even as the month of Ramadan is drawing to a close, they are planning and preparing how they're going to disobey Allah on the day of Eid. They're planning, we're going to go here, we're going to do this. And we'll lie from and so many types of haram, so many things that people are, going to, are, are planning to do of all the different kinds of haram. Rather, there are also people who are not planning to worship Allah on that day. They don't typically pray on Eid or they don't typically observe or care, are not careful about their prayers on Eid. And this makes you fear for the person that perhaps their Ramadan has not been accepted. And ultimately, acceptance is in the hands of Allah. None of us know whether our deeds have been accepted or not. We're all fearful of that. But you fear, wallah, you fear. When you see a person who the first thing that they do after the end of that, that time of worship is to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal or to plan how they're going to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. Or the person who sees it as a day of new clothes and plenty of food, but doesn't see it as a continuation of the worship that you had done in Ramadan, the next phase of your training is to put into practice the habits you have built in Ramadan. And Al-Hasn al-Basri, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the great Imam from the Imma of the Tabi'een, he said, Kullu yawmin 
لا يعصى الله فيه فهو عيد كل يوم يقطعه المؤمن في طاعة مولاه وذكره وشكره فهو له عيد He said Every day that Allah is not disobeyed that's a day of Eid Every day that a believer spends in obedience to Allah remembering him and being grateful to him that's a day of Eid and that's what we do on Eid وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may finish the days of Ramadan and you may make takbir, you say Allahu Akbar for what Allah guided you to وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So you may show gratitude to Allah. Eid is a day of remembering Allah, a day of gratitude to Allah, a day of obedience to Allah. But it's not a day of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a day of forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is not, doesn't deserve to be called a day of Eid as Al-Hasan al-Basri said, every day that a believer spends in the worship of Allah, in the obedience of Allah, in the remembrance of Allah, in gratitude to Allah, that's the day that deserves to be called Eid. And Waqi' ibn al-Jarrah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, kharajna ma'a sufyan al-thawri fi yawmi Eidin faqal inna awwalu ma نَبْدَأُ بِهِ فِي يَوْمِنَا غَضُّ أَبْصَارِنَا Waqi ibn al-Jarrah rahimahullah ta'ala he said we went out with Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala on a day of Eid and he said the first thing that we're going to start our day with is lowering our gaze because the day of Eid and the Eid prayer is the time when all of the the women come out the, the people who were normally who would normally keep themselves to themselves even the young girl who was just before the age of marriage who would normally keep herself to herself. That was the Islamic tradition that we had in those days, uh, that those, those women that were close to the age of marriage, they would keep themselves to themselves and they wouldn't typically be you know, outside. And subhanAllah, on that day, on the day of Eid, they would come out all together. And so the first act of obedience, they, look at how the Salaf al-Salih understood the day of Eid. The first thing I'm going to do today is what? It's not disobey Allah. How can I finish the month of Ramadan with all of that obedience? And then the first thing I do, be let my eyes fall upon everything haram. Instead, the first thing we're going to start our day with today is lowering our gaze. And this statement, the first thing we're going to start with, it kind of indicates, doesn't it, that the whole day of Eid, they were thinking about how can I obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I get near to Allah azza wa jal? They're going out to celebrate. And yet still, their focus is obedience to Allah and what they can do to get near to Allah Azza wa Jal. And Mu'alla ibn al-Fadl, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, كانوا يدعون الله ta'ala ستة أشهر أن يبلغهم رمضان ويدعونه ستة أشهر أن يتقبل منهم. He said, Mu'alla ibn al-Fadl, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said they used to make dua to Allah for six months to allow them to reach Ramadan. And they used to make dua to Allah for the other six months for Allah to accept it from them. SubhanAllah, that was what was in the mind of the Salaf al-Salih rahimahullah ta'ala. They were, in their mind was, has this been accepted from me? Ask Allah to accept it from me. Six months of the year from Ramadan, six months, they were making dua to Allah, oh Allah accept Ramadan from me. Accept my worship in Ramadan. And then the six months prior to the next Ramadan, O oh Allah, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. O oh Allah, allow us to reach Ramadan. Six months asking Allah to accept it and six months asking Allah to bring them to the next one. That's how the Salaf al-Salih, rahimahumullah ta'ala, that's how they used to behave after the month of Ramadan. And it's also narrated uh, from Mufaddal ibn Lahiq Abi Bishr. He said, سَمِعْتُ عَدِي بْنِ أَوْطَى يَخْطُبُ بَعْدِ انْقِضَاءِ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ يَقُول He said, I heard Adi ibn Arta give a khutbah after the end of the month of Ramadan in which he said, كَأَنَّ كَبِدًا لَمْ تَظْمَأْ وَكَأَنَّ عَيْنًا لَمْ تَسْهَرْ فَقَدْ ذَهَبَ الظَّمَأُ وَبَقِيَ الْأَجْرْ فَيَا لَيْتَ شِعْرِي he said, I heard Adi ibn Abta'a give a khutbah after the end of the month of Ramadan in which he said, it's as though we never felt any thirst and as though our eyes never stayed awake. Our thirst has gone 
and nothing remains except the reward. He said, فَيَا لَيْتَ شَعْرِي مَنِ الْمَقْبُولُ مِنَّا فَنُهَنِّئَ وَمَنِ الْمَرْدُودُ مِنَّا فَنُعْزِيَ He said, يَا لَيْتَ شَعْرِي He said, who has been accepted from among us so that we can congratulate them? And who has been rejected from among us so that we can commiserate, give them our commiserations? فَأَمَّا أَنْتَ أَيُّهَا الْمَقْبُولُ فَهَنِيئًا هَنِيئًا He said, and as for you, the one that has been accepted, the deed that has been accepted, هَنِيئًا هَنِيئًا Our excellent welcome. You know that. Congratulations to you. وَأَمَّا أَنْتَ أَيُّهَا الْمَرْدُودُ فَجَبَرَ اللَّهُ مُصِيبَتَكَ he said, but for the one that has been rejected, may Allah Azza wa Jal complete your musibah. May Allah Azza wa Jal, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala patch up this calamity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fix this calamity. ثُمَّ يَبْكِي وَيُبْكِي Then he began to cry and the people began to cry with him. Because nobody knows what has been accepted from them. Nobody knows what has, what is going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah only accepts from the righteous. They used to fear that. And even perhaps they would cry out of a fear of not knowing whether something had been accepted from them or not. And the Salaf, rahimahullah ta'ala, they used to say to each other after the end of Ramadan, من المحروم في هذا الشهر؟ المحروم من حرم الخير حقا المحروم مَنْ حُرِمَ دَوَامُ الطَّاعَةِ حَقَّا They used to say, who is the one who has been prohibited, really who has lost out on this month? The one who's been lost out on this month for sure, the one who's really lost out, is the one who lost out on doing good. The one who's lost out is the one who has lost out being continuous and regular in obeying Allah. They used to see that the person who has lost out is the one who isn't able to be continuous after the month of Ramadan. That's a sign of a person being mahroom, being prohibited from the good that came from Ramadan, that they weren't able to have dawam, al-ta'a, regular and consistent obedience to Allah Azawajal. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-hayy al-qayyum. We ask Allah Azawajal by his greatest name, the name that if he has made dua to with it, he answers and the name that if he is asked by it, he gives to make us from those people who our Ramadan was accepted and from those people who learnt lessons from this month of Ramadan and from those people who continue to act upon it and implement those lessons with consistency and continuity for the whole year around. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention. And Allah knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.